Namaste, I'm Mimi Zambrano and I'm the wellness coach for the Long Branch Public School District in Long Branch, New Jersey. I'm also the founder of Amy's Yoga Abilities LLC. I have over 900 hours of yoga teacher training and I'm a kids coaching connection life coach, Reiki master, and I've completed the Rutgers University Social Emotional Learning and Character Development Program, as well as a proud graduate from Rosemont College and Villanova University. I've been featured in the New York Yoga Life magazine for pioneering yoga in education, as well as being a guest blogger for the wellness company KDR and other companies. And I've also presented my wellness workshops for the New Jersey Department of Education and other educational and nonprofit organizations in New Jersey. I've been teaching for over 13 years, and it is truly my passion to support students and staff to reach their full potential through the practice of yoga, mindfulness, and social emotional learning. Our brain is the most powerful muscle in our body. Our body and mind are interconnected and it's so important to focus on positive words because the words that we speak in our mind become the words that we speak and the words that we speak turn into our actions. So it's so important that we're aware of what we're thinking, how we're feeling. So some kindness tools to support your students and staff I'm going to share with you today. There's this awesome book called The Hidden Messages of Water by Masuro Emoto. And he was a scientist that did this experiment with two bottles of water. And with one bottle of water, he said all positive words to. And the other bottle of water, he said all negative things to. He took both bottles of water and froze them. Then he looked at the molecular makeup under you know, a microscope. And what he discovered was the words that were positive, the molecules in that water bottle turned out to be these beautiful snowflake-like crystals. And the words that were negative turned out to be all these deformed shapes. And this is really powerful because our words have meaning, right? Our words can really affect no, not only our body, but the way we interact with each other. And we can think of our words like toothpaste. So if you have a tube of toothpaste, this is a great way you can share this activity with your students. So our words are like toothpaste. Once they come out, we can't squeeze them back in. Positive or negative, those words stick. So it's really important that we're mindful and aware of the language that we're speaking. And it starts with ourself. What are the words that we're speaking from within? And it's helpful to remember that we're all like a beautiful treasure chest. We all have so many precious jewels to share. So one exercise that you can try with your students is the treasure chest activity. So I went to my local craft store and I painted a treasure chest and I designed it. So Long Branch is home of the green wave. So I wrote green wave treasure. And then inside the treasure chest, I wrote celebrate your jewels. You have everything to, you need to reach your full potential. Let your light shine. So one way you can use a treasure chest is to cut up different positive words. So for example, I have motivated, powerful, playful, positive words of affirmations that your students could pick from the treasure chest to see what are their jewels, what are their amazing potential. Or you could have your students choose the word and then put them in the treasure chest. So for example, if your student picked motivated, they would put their word in the treasure chest and then you could go around the classroom and you would come up with all of your jewels. And then from there, you could do a variety of activities with having your students journal about what makes them shine with that particular word. You could use that as a one word check-in to help them with their feelings vocabulary as that will support them with their emotional intelligence. So the treasure chest activity is a fun way and creative way to engage with your students. 
Other ways to use affirmations with your students, I love using the Manifest Your Magnificence card deck by Susan Housen. And what's so cool with her card deck are the cards are colorful, they have an affirmation on one side and a little saying about it. So for example, this one says, I am successful. And on the back, it says, I achieved the goals I set for myself. So you can use affirmation cards. You can have your students create their own affirmation cards using note cards or again, getting creative. So there's so many different ways you can do that. Depending on the age of your students, I've also used the Power Thought cards by Louise Hay. So for example, similar to the younger version, but it says, I experience love wherever I go. Love is everywhere and I am loving and lovable. Loving people fill my life and I find myself easily expressing love to others. So again, you can create your own affirmations for your students. I've also taken the list of affirmations from the Manifest Your Magnificence card deck and created a Google Doc for my students. So they have all of the, the affirmations on this piece of paper where they can check off, you know, an affirmation of how they're feeling as a one word check in or, you know, if they're not feeling that great, maybe that's a word that they want to, you know, work toward. So again, there's so many different ways you can use affirmations to use as a one word check in. You can also incorporate a mirror for your students. So I found this from the dollar store where, you know, really have your students make eye contact, right? We're always looking down at our phones and technology and we're disconnected from each other. So practicing eye contact by saying these powerful affirmations to yourself is so important, especially when it comes to self-awareness. So for example, you would have your mirror hold it up in front of your face, smile at yourself, and you would say an affirmation. So for example, if I say, I am strong, I say it with power. Because if I said, I am strong, right, there's no energy to it. So we really wanna be aware of our energy. So saying those affirmations with positive power is super important. Other ways you can do check-ins with your students I love this resource. It's called the Social Emotional Learning Lab, a comprehensive SEL resource guide by Victoria Protowicki and Marius J. Elias. And in this book is a great resource of different SEL activities that you can use. I love their feelings check-in and they have different levels. So for example, for the level one feelings check-in, you have the feelings of safe, surprised, sad, mad, excited, tired, scared, and happy. So as your students come in in the morning or even for yourself, because teacher self-care is super important, you could have your students circle or color in the emotion that they're feeling. You could do this when they come in as a check-in, and then you could also have it as a check-out. So of course, you know, noticing how your students are feeling, interacting with them, you know, asking them how do they feel is so important. So again, this is a great resource and each level, you know, adds some more feelings and adds to their feelings vocabulary. You may be familiar with the ruler method from Yale University and the book Permission to Feel, which is written by Mark Brackett. And in this book, they have the mood meter tool and the mood meter is connected to the colors. So we have red, yellow, blue, and green, and then the vocabulary of feelings that go along with the mood meter. So you could use a mood meter as a tool. You can get creative with using different flashcards. So for example, I found some Snoopy flashcards that go along with the characters, go along with the emotions. So again, working with what you have, knowing the ages of your students is so important for checking in with them because understanding how they feel is so important when they feel safe and connected. That's how they're going to learn, right? When we reach the heart, we can teach the mind. So it's so important to integrate one word check-ins throughout your day to check in with your students so they know they feel seen, they feel heard, and they feel supported. So one word check-ins are amazing. You could also do a one word check-in with a slate, you know, or something to write with. So for example, you could have, you know, your students write down how do you feel. If they feel happy, you could have them hold up 
their word. You could have a speaker power tool, so an item that designates who is speaking, and then you could go around the room to have your students share, and also explaining that it's okay not to share. That you know sometimes you know students don't want to verbalize their feelings out loud, but it's always important to you know check in with them in your own way so that they do feel seen, supported, and heard. So you could do this with a slate, you could do this with a notebook, and then. You know, notice how are you feeling. You could do this with pictures as well. So use your creativity to support your students and your staff with check-ins because when you're feeling supported, you're going to be able to connect with everyone. You know, with a with a more positive attitude and experience. Perspective is so important when it comes to honoring our students' voice and, and their experience. So this exercise you can practice with your students using a piece of paper or maybe you'll find some fun sunglasses or use recyclable materials such as a toilet paper holder or a paper towel roll, whatever you have. So first you're gonna take a, a piece of paper and you're gonna roll it up vertically. You're gonna look through your paper telescope and just take a moment to notice. What do you see? Then you'll slowly start to look up. You'll start to look down. And then you'll look towards your left. And you'll look towards your right and start to notice, what do you see? You can also add a mindful walk to this activity. So gently starting to take one step at a time, one breath at a time, noticing, observing, what do you see? And then after your students get to experience that, have a conversation. Was that easy? Was that hard? Did they notice something different? So just ask them. Then you'll do the same activity again. You'll reopen the paper and you're going to fold it now horizontally. So you're going to roll it up with a horizontal roll. And once again, look through your paper telescope. And what do you notice now? What do you see? What's similar? What's different? And I'm going to repeat those same movements. I'm going to look up. I'm going to look down, I'm going to look to the left, and I'm going to look to the right. And then again, I can add in that mindful walk, walking one step at a time, one breath at a time, observing, noticing. And then when your students finish that part of the activity, once again, have a dialogue, have a conversation compare and contrast what their perspective was like from the vertical shape and the horizontal shape of the piece of paper. And this reminds us that we all have different perspectives. We all have different experiences and there's no right or wrong. Honoring everyone's you know, viewpoint is so important. You can add on to this activity by using sunglasses or recycled materials. So for example, you can stand on a chair, of course, being careful, and you can put on your fun sunglasses. And again, notice the perspective from here, looking up, looking down, looking from one side to the other. Again, what do you notice? What do you see? What's it like from standing up here? All right, and then you'll carefully come down. Here I have a kaleidoscope, and I'm gonna mindfully walk around the room, noticing what I see through the lens of the kaleidoscope. Again, just using one step at a time, one breath at a time to notice the perspective. You can also do this by standing on something high up. So 
Again, safety first. <laughs> Standing on something higher, adding some more fun tools to this. So the oversized sunglasses. Again, what do you notice? What do you see? Using our senses, that connects us to our self-awareness, right? And this also supports our social awareness by being aware of everyone's perspective. And again, you'll carefully come down. You can use technology to connect to social emotional learning, yoga, and meditation. So I'm gonna share with you a variety of resources that you can use with your students in a virtual setting. So one word check-ins you can use with the Google Chrome Music Lab. And what's cool about this is you can create your own sound to go with the word that you're feeling. And you can, you know, play around with this. Make sure you click the check mark that says save and it will create your very own link. So for example, my one word check-in is happy and I click play and this brings happy to life. <laughs> you can also use Google Jamboard as a tool for one word check-ins. So I like to use the sticky note. So that's the fourth icon. I click on the sticky note. I can change the color of my note a one word check in, how do you feel? So if you're feeling tired or whatever your word is, you would just type it in, you click save, another sticky note will pop up, you can write another word or you can click cancel. Just be aware that when your students are adding to the jams that everyone has editing access. So be sure that they're mindful of each other's work so they don't delete it. So you can make your sticky note bigger, smaller, you can turn it, you can move it all around. So if you're familiar with Google Jamboard, there's so much you can do with getting creative. If you're new to it, it's a great tool for checking in with, your, with yourself to see how you're feeling. Another great website that I love to use when it comes to one word check-ins is Seesaw. So if you're interested in joining my Seesaw classroom, just email me and I'll give you the code because Seesaw changes the code every week. So I didn't wanna confuse you. So once you join my classroom, you'll see all of the different activities that I've uploaded here. So for the one word check-in, you would click add response, find your name. So I'm the sample student. And then you have all these choices. So it's so important for students to have voice and choice. So whether they wanna take a photo of how they're feeling, if they wanna draw, create a video, upload something from their Google Drive or the device that they're using, write it on a virtual notepad or create a link. Maybe it's a song on YouTube or you know something like that. So just for an example, I'm gonna click on drawing and you can either draw with all the different, you know, art tools that they have. You have a whole set of colors, your palette on that side. So if you're feeling happy, you can just write the word happy. You could also create a text box. So the letter T, you could also write the word happy. You can move this around once you're finished writing in your word. As you can see, you'll be able to move it around. You could add, again, a picture or a video or upload something. The three dots, you could add a shape. So for example, if I add a heart, I can you know move that around as well. There are other options that you can do to create, you know, get creative with your one word check in. And then once you're done playing around on Seesaw, you click the green check mark and then it saves it and includes it in my classroom feed. So it's pretty cool. Then you'll get to see everyone's different one word check ins or whatever activities that they are working on. So when you click back to activities, you can also upload any of your coloring the calms. So if you scroll down, I've uploaded the, 
the bookmark, that template that you can use to write positive affirmations. You could donate them to a local nonprofit. I also have the sun and the moon yantras that you can color to calm with. So again, you would just click on add response. Once it finds your name, you click on your name. And then here, the template is already provided. So once again, you could decide, you know, what coloring tool do you want to use? You can choose, you know, the different color. And, it, you know, it takes mindfulness and focus to add the, you know, creativity to your yantra. There's also the moon one. So see that little arrow there? If you click on that, it'll bring you to the second slide or it should, oh, there it is on that side right there. So both the sun and the moon yantras are already uploaded. Again, when you're finished, you click on the green check mark and then it would add to the, the feed. Again, you can get creative with Seesaw as you can, you know, record yourself reading meditations. You can use any of your favorite books as a guided meditation. If you use, you know, Get Epic, they have a great library of the Susan Verde books, the I Am, and I'm sure there's many more, you know, mindfulness and social emotional learning books. So again, you know, your students can create their own meditations that they can listen to each other. You can, you know, get creative. And I've uploaded the meditations that I shared with you in this video. So we have the pebble meditation and also the meta meditation that you can use as tools for self-reflection. Other tools that I like to use when it comes to getting creative with meditations are the Pixton app. So again, the code is on the slides that I've shared with you. And once you join my Pixton classroom, or of course you can, you know, create your own Pixton classroom you can create your own comic books. So this is one that I've already created for self-care for SEL Day, where I do a whole little mindfulness and movement sequence as a comic book character. So as you can see, it says your breath is your power. Let's connect to our breath with the heart breath. So each frame you get to create. So if I go back to my Pixton classroom just to show you, when you, you know, I have some I've already done, so I'm just gonna click on edit. And then as you can see, I have three different frames already, but you can choose the background. So the free version has a, a variety of different, you know, backgrounds that you can use. And then if you look at the top of your screen, this is how you can edit you know, each little frame. So for example, if I pick that as my background, then I have the, the character choices. You can edit the character, you can add a character. So again, you know, depending on what meditation you're gonna create, maybe you add people, maybe it's just yourself. You can also, you know, find the focus. Do you want a close up? Do you want farther away? This is where you add the words, the different faces and the different actions. And then of course, when you're finished, you click on done. So it saves your work. So again, another way to get creative when it comes to, you know, mindfulness, when it comes to meditation and social emotional learning. Now I'm gonna share with you some popular meditation apps that are great to use for yourself because teacher self-care is just as important as your student self-care. And these are other great resources for your students. So Calm is a great resource that you can access this free 30 days of mindfulness in the classroom. And what's cool with this, you can access it every day. You don't have to go in order, but for example, when you click on the first day, you're gonna get some music here that maybe you'll play as you know your students are doing their work. If you click on day, the next day, again, you can go right in order. It has the breathe bubble. Again, they provide music, there's guided meditations. 
So it's a great resource that's totally free that you can use with your students. So that's with using Calm. I also love to use the Headspace for educators. So you just sign up with your school email and then you have access to oh, so many different meditation exercises. I like using the, the kids versions because they're a little shorter and they're simple to use. So for example, if you scroll down and find where it says kids. Now, even though it says under five, they're still appropriate even if they're an older age. It's just the length of time which is different. So again, feel free to explore these. Again, it's great and it's free when you sign up with your school account. Insight Timer is another awesome meditation app where you can find so many different guided meditations. If you download it on your phone, you'll also get the virtual singing bowls, which is pretty cool, but that's not on the website. It's only on the, the phone to have that, you know, access. I also have a Long Branch Public Schools Wave Wellness Coaching website. So you're also welcome to use all of the different resources that I provide for the school district to inspire you to reach your full potential with a variety of practices, which I like to call heart work. You can also check out my YouTube channel and I have so many different videos that you can use for self-care brain breaks from, you know, mindful eating to different field trips to mindfulness walks through the pumpkin field, through an apple orchard, visiting Mama Hill, which is a vegan restaurant here in Long Branch, New Jersey. So there are a variety of videos that you can play, you know, for your students that I have here on my YouTube channel. So again, you can find that link in the slides or just, you know, put a search in Amy Zambrano Yoga for the different videos. So again, you'll have access to all of the links that I've shared. You can print them out if you know that's easier for you and your students, but feel free to reach out to me at amzambrano at longbranch.k12.nj.us to connect. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. So no matter how we are feeling, our breath is a tool to help us to manage our feelings and emotions. Because no matter where you go, you always have your breath. It's our greatest superpower. So first I'm gonna share with you some breathing techniques that all you need is yourself. So we're gonna start with the five to five breath. So the five to five breath, you're gonna inhale counting to five. So as you breathe in, you're gonna go one, two, three, four, five. Then you're gonna hold your breath for the count of two. One, two. And then you're gonna exhale once again, counting to five. One, two, three, four, five. So you're welcome to place your hands on your belly or your hands to your heart as we practice the five to five breath together. And what this does, this activates the nerve endings at the base of our belly, which are connected to the parasympathetic nervous system of rest and digest. So this naturally calms down our body when we're feeling stressed out, when we're in that fight or flight sympathetic nervous system mode. So again, our breath can really help us to come to calm. So let's try the five to five breath together. So making yourself feel comfortable, breathing in one, two, three, four, five. Hold one, two, breathe out. One, two, three, four, five. Again, breathing in one, two, three, four, five. Hold one, two, breathe out. One, two, three, four, five. And one more nice deep breath together. Breathing in, one, two, three, four, five. Hold, one, two, breathing out. One, two, three, four, five. So if you find that the five to five breath is a little much, you could always modify or adapt the count to make you, you know, feel comfortable. So you could always inhale for the count of two, hold for one and exhale for two, or you can also increase it 
as the more you know you practice this technique. Next, we're gonna learn the heart breath, which is a calming breath. So let's bring our hands together to rub our hands, to feel our inner sunshine, our inner heat, because that sun shines inside our heart. And our breath helps us to clear out all those clouds that are in the way of our sunshine. So just take a moment, breathing in, breathing out, feel all that warmth, all that heat. And then we're gonna connect them to our heart and you're welcome to close your eyes or keep them open as we take a nice deep breath, breathing in and breathing out. Again, breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. Beautiful job, everyone. The next breath is our lion's breath, which is an energizing breath. So you're gonna stick out your tongue and you're gonna go <sighs> just like that. We'll do that two more times together. Breathing in, breathing out, let it roar. <sighs> One more time, breathing in, breathing out, let it roar. <sighs> and that is a nice cleansing breath as well as it's energizing and also just again clears out all the stuff that you know gets built up not only in our lungs but also in our minds so we can get that clarity that focus which supports us with self-awareness and self-management and even just interacting with each other with our staff with our students for social awareness and relationship skills as well. The next breathing exercise I like to call take 10 to zen using your hands. So what you'll do is you're going to breathe in and breathe out, tracing the palm of your hands. You're welcome to connect this to the five to five breath. You could add in, you know, counting. You can add in, you know, if you're practicing vocabulary, you know, make it right for what your subject area is, your students. And then after you complete one full cycle with one hand, you'll high five your other hand as you breathe in and breathe out. And again, you can get creative with how you, you know, take 10 to Zen, whatever makes you feel comfortable. And then the last breathing technique that you just need your body for is called Nadi Shundana, which is also known as alternate nostril breathing. And this is another technique that helps to balance our brain and our body when we're feeling overwhelmed. So once again, this tunes us back in to the parasympathetic nervous system. So for this exercise, you're gonna use your ring finger and your thumb. And as you inhale, so I'm gonna inhale through my right nostril as I close off my left nostril. So I'm gonna breathe in, and then I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna close off both of my nostrils with my thumb, and then I'm gonna exhale by Thumb is on my right nostril as I exhale through my left nostril, lifting my ring finger up, breathing out. And now I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. I'm gonna inhale through my left nostril, breathing in. Close and hold, breathe out, exhaling through my right nostril. So we'll do this one more time together, breathing in through the right, hold, exhale through the left. Inhale through the left, Hold, exhale through the right. So it's up to you how long you want to inhale and exhale for. As you're just starting out, it's good to start with a, a lower count and then work your way up. And of course, you know, if you feel dizzy or anything, feel free to stop that at any time. But once again, the alternate nostril breathing is a natural way to calm the body, calm the mind and bring it back into balance. So a great tool for, for self-management. Now we're going to learn tangible tools to connect to our breath with. So first we're going to learn the pipe cleaner breathing bead exercise. So materials that you'll need, you'll need a pipe cleaner and some beads. And I like to connect the pipe cleaner breath to the 525 breathing technique. So using my pipe cleaner, I'm just going to make a little loop and then twist it. You know, always being careful, sometimes the pipe cleaners can be sharp. So I make a, a loop on one side. And then I'm gonna mindfully string the beads on the pipe cleaner. So I'm using five beads. Three. Four. And five. 
And then once all my beads are on the pipe cleaner, I'm gonna make another loop on the other side. So ways to use your pipe cleaner breath. As you inhale, you'll move your bead down, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. So using a tangible tool to connect to your breath, you can also apply it to the five to five breath. So I would move my beads all the way down to one end and then as I inhale, counting to five, I'm gonna move each beat. So I'm gonna breathe in, one, two, three, four, five, hold, one, two, breathe out. As I exhale, I'm gonna move them back down the other way. One, two, three, four, five. So that's using the pipe cleaner breath as a way to calm the body, calm the mind. You can also use tangible items such as a stuffed animal. I like to call this the, the breathing buddy technique where if, you're, if you have access to the floor and you're on a mat or you know somewhere comfortable, as you lay down, you can place the stuffed animal on your belly and as you breathe in, your belly's gonna go up and your belly's gonna go down as you breathe in and breathe out. Again, you could do that with a stuffed animal if you have an eye pillow, which is like a bean bag, you could also place the eye pillow on your belly as you breathe in and breathe out. You could also do this on your belly and place the item on your back and maybe make a little pillow with your arms, bringing your head to your hands as you breathe in and breathe out. And you really feel that connection of your belly to the earth to feel that grounding sensation as you breathe in and breathe out. So again, doing what feels best for you when it comes to your breathing buddy breath. You can also use pom-poms as a tool, and I like to call this clearing out the clouds. So the pom-poms represent the clouds. So I would take a handful of pom-poms and I'd place them, again, on the floor. This is a on the, the ground exercise and coming onto my belly and I can have my hands underneath my shoulders and I'm gonna clear out the clouds to let my sun shine as I breathe in and breathe out, clearing out the clouds. And then the pom-poms, you know, they disperse. So breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. So the pom-pom breath can be a fun activity for really any age. I think the older students enjoy, you know, this playful experience to, to connect to their breath because their breath is their superpower. Using books are another tangible tool for connecting to our breath. You can read a book as a guided meditation as you take a deep breath in and take a deep breath out. I love to use this book called A Handful of Quiet, Happiness in Four Pebbles by Fitch Not Han. And I like to call this the pebble meditation. So you could use, you know, any kind of rock, any kind of stone as a tangible item to hold on to as you breathe and mindfully listen to me read the guided meditation. You could also lay down and use the tool as, you know, right on your belly. So you feel that connection of your belly going up and your belly going down with the stone. And what's cool with the, the rock rocks with the stones, it reminds us that our breath is just like a rock. It's there to ground us. It's there to connect us back to the earth when our mind might feel like it's all in swirls. So again, tangible tools are a great way to, to get grounded. Coloring to calm is another breathing technique that uses a tangible item such as crayons, markers, or colored pencils to connect to your breath. So whether you print out different coloring pages or find you know, a coloring book to connect to your breath with, it's a great creative way to find relaxation. I love to use the yantras, and this book is called Nine Designs for Inner Peace, The Ultimate Guide for, to Meditating with Color, Shape, and Sound by my teacher, Sarah Tomlinson. And the yantras, are the geometric shapes that are connected to the planets. And I love using the sun and the moon as a way to really connect to our self-awareness with ourself and with our students. So you can print out 
the different yantra so this one's the sun which is radiance and the moon which is nourishment and while they look similar there are some little differences about each one but you want to use your creativity as you color to calm your yantras and you always want to color from the outside in and this is you know a creative meditation practice that really starts to clear out any clouds in the way of our sun in the in the way of our moon as the sun represents our motivation our determination and the moon represents our emotions and our self-care so from the book you can see this is the sun yantra and then we have the moon mantra and of course you can color them similar to the colors in the book or of course you can create you know your own colors to the sun and the moon yantra and then i like to have my students incorporate a mantra which is a positive word a positive phrase to go with their yantra so it could be i am strong i am brave i am confident i am smart any positive power that they can keep on playing in replay in their mind so they build that confidence that self-awareness to be the best that they can be Mudras are another tool that we can use when it comes to self-awareness and self-management. I love using the Mudra card decks by Alison Dinacola and Sabina Espinet because they're colorful, they're clear, and they're really creative, you know, for the students to tap in to their positive power because there are nerve endings at the bottom of our fingertips that are connected to our parasympathetic nervous system. So just by using our hands in these different postures, we're able to naturally come to calm and to connect to our breath. So today we're going to tune into our inner rainbow superpowers, also known as the chakras, as we connect them to the mudras. So these mudras are specifically from this mudra card deck, the mudras for awakening the energy body. And I also highly recommend the mudras for awakening the five elements. So for the color red, we have our hands like this. And the sound of red is LAM. Then we have the color orange. So the mudra is like this. And the orange sound is VAM. The next color of our rainbow is yellow. Double thumbs up and the sound is RAM. The next color of the rainbow is green and the sound is YAM. That's our green flower. The next color of the rainbow is blue, which is the sound is HOM. The next color of the rainbow is indigo, and the sound is OM. And the last color of the rainbow is violet, and the sound is also OM. So we're going to connect all of those colors together because, again, we have everything we need right at our fingertips. So we're going to go together red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, purple. Again, breathing in red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, purple. So you can have your students create their own mudras or once again use the different flashcards to connect to their self-awareness. I love to also connect the mudras with a mantra. So just by going each finger to your thumb as you breathe in and breathe out, we are going to connect this to the I am peaceful mantra. And I've added the harmonium to the mantra and my students really connect with the, the power of our voice and the, the movements of our hands as this song connects us all together. The song is also on the Long Branch Public Schools YouTube channel, so you can check it out and play it with your students. But we're going to sing it together, bringing each finger to your thumb as we sing I am peaceful. Connecting mudras to mantras for self-awareness. So it goes like this.
We'll sing that three more times all together now. Here we go. I am peaceful. I am peaceful. I am peaceful. So beautiful way to once again connect the mantra, the power of our voice with our mudra, the power of our hands, because you have everything you need. You are already whole. And this just brings us back into balance for, you know, better self-awareness and self-management. For social awareness, I like to integrate heart work tools. So for example, having my students create their own positive power bookmarks that we donated to local nonprofits. So for example, my students have donated these bookmarks to the Ronald McDonald House. And it was a really beautiful experience as we had almost 300 bookmarks designed by students in grades one through five that either, you know, cut out their own template or maybe you have a bookmark template already made, but they use their creativity, they use the power of their words to, you know, inspire and lift up the families, you know, connected to the Ronald McDonald House. They even added a breathing bead tassel, so adding a pipe cleaner and then using the, the beads to connect to your breath with. So this is a great tool to, you know, connect your students with the local organizations that, you know, support the community. So I highly recommend creating your own positive power bookmarks as karma yoga is the yoga of service, of giving back. So again, it connects back to our social awareness. We've also made positive power breathing beads, also known as mala beads, as another tool to you know, connect to our breath with, but also we sold them to raise money for local nonprofits. So you can make your own mala bead bracelet or again, whatever you'd like to call it. I like to call it the positive power beads by using jewelry string. And then I ordered the mala beads, the rosewood beads from India online and then using a scissor and then optional, you know, jewelry tools. Again, go to your local craft store or look online to get really fancy. And then I always tie a knot at the bottom of the string. A full mala would be 108 beads, but I find the best amount of beads to make as a bracelet to fit comfortably on your wrist is 27, which is also a full, a quarter of a full mala. And this is a mindfulness practice by, you know, taking one bead at a time to mindfully string through as you breathe in and breathe out. And again, I like to have my students make one from, for themselves to keep and then make one for someone else. So whether they're giving it to someone in their family or we find a local nonprofit to donate to, it's a great way to create connection and community through social awareness. We are going to learn what I like to call heart work tools to support your students and staff for self-care. So we are going to make our very own eye pillow out of a knee-high sock, rice, and I also like to add in dried lavender and some lavender essential oil. So what you'll do is taking your knee-high sock, you're gonna tie a knot at the heel, and then using a little math and mindfulness, you're gonna measure one cup of rice, and you're gonna pour it in a container where it's, you know, you can easily pour it out. I like to use these lavender dryer bags from Trader Joe's because once you open them up, it's the, the dried lavender. And lavender is a great plant to help us to calm the body and calm the mind. So it's a great, you know, sensory item to add to your eye pillow. And then you'll open up your sock and carefully and mindfully pour in the rice. Shake it down a little bit. And then after you do that, if you wanted to add, you know, an essential oil, lavender is great. You could also use peppermint. 
which is good for focusing or if you have a headache or lemon, which is also good for focus and also for immunity. But for today, I'm going to use the lavender essential oil. I personally recommend Young Living as it's the, the best company because it's organic and there's no added chemicals or fillers, but you know, use what you have. And then I'm going to add in two drops. So I'm going to mindfully count one, two. And then I'm going to tie a knot at the other end. And I'm going to massage the rice around so all that lavender, you know, gets through all of the rice. And then you can use this for relaxation at your desk. You can use it if you are doing a restorative pose. It's a great tool that you can use with your students. And of course, if you didn't want to make it, you can also buy them online. So that is an eye pillow. Making Magical Mist uses essential oils as a sensory tool to help us to relax or stay focused. So I love to use with kids peppermint, lemon, and lavender. And to make the magical mist, you'll need essential oils, a carrier oil, oils you cook with. I personally love to use coconut oil, but you could use, you know, canola oil, vegetable oil, whatever oil that you have in your cupboard. And then you're also going to use some water. So online, I bought these spray bottles. Again, they come in all different shapes and sizes. And depending on the bottle will also depend on how many drops of the essential oil you're going to put in. So for a small bottle like this, I'm going to put in about 20 drops of the essential oil. So for today, I'm going to use peppermint. This helps with focus. This also helps with headaches or muscle tension. So I'm going to mindfully count to 20 as I drop all of the peppermint essential oil in the bottle here. And again, this is a great sensory tool to support us with self-management, helps us with self-awareness. And then after I pour in my 20 drops of my essential oil, my plant positive power, I'm going to put in about a quarter of the way of the carrier oil. So coconut oil comes in two forms. I recommend the refractionated coconut oil, meaning it's always going to be in the liquid form. Otherwise, regular coconut oil gets solid when it's a little colder. So I'm going to carefully pour the coconut oil about a quarter of the way. And then the rest, I'm going to just fill up with water. Again, just practicing mindfulness so it doesn't spill. And then I'm going to tie and twist on the cap. And then I could add a label to, to name my magical mist. And every time I use it, I'm going to shake it up. And then great ways to use it are on your wrist points. So you could squirt a little on your wrist points, rub them together. Also your collarbones, the back of your neck. And you can even spray it on your head as well as a natural hairspray. So you can get creative depending on, you know, the scents that, you know, smell good to you. I always recommend the Young Living brand as it's the most natural and organic. So again, when it comes to students, I prefer to use peppermint, which helps for focus. And again, if you have a headache, lemon is good for focus as well and supports immunity. And lavender is great for calming down the body and calming down the mind. So that is how you make magical mist using essential oils and a carrier oil. Vision boarding is a great tool to really support you in your goal setting. This helps to make our goals and our dreams actually happen when we create intention and we create action. So you can design your own vision board by using a variety of materials. You can also do this virtually by using Google Slides or whatever program that you use on a computer. But you can find any kind of cardboard that you know you might recycle different shapes and sizes. And then you'll use different magazines to cut out you know, inspirational quotes or, you know, finding something that's inspiring for you. 
as you create your goals, creating your vision. This could be something very specific, whether it be, you know, you want to write a book, you might cut out, you know, pictures of books or inspirational quotes that are going to inspire you to write your book. Or if you're not sure yet, what's important is to put things that make you happy. Because the happier we are, the less stressed we'll be. So having things to remind you of what brings you joy will help you to get clear. I also recommend before you start vision boarding that you do some breathing and meditation exercises to clear out any clouds in the way of our sunshine, to really get to the heart, get to the truth of your intention, to clear out any false beliefs, any negativity, any lies that we have in our mind that prevent us from actually achieving our goals. So vision boarding can be a really powerful tool and a creative way to connect with your students so they can reach their full potential. Connecting us to our relationship skills, I think having the relationship with yourself is one of the most important relationships to focus on, that relationship of self-care. So I love to use crystals or gemstones as a way to connect back to myself to practice self-care through meditation. So this is a tangible way to, you know, connect with your breath to practice mindfulness. I love using the book, Using Gemstones to Connect with Your Superpowers for Kids and Adults by Alex Hadassah Anzalone. And she features about eight different crystals in this book. And, you know, I went to my local crystal store and got the actual crystals to go along with the story so that the kids can actually see the crystals, feel the crystals, because they come in different shapes and sizes. Some are smooth, some are raw. So the powerful crystals for kids to use for focus and confidence, we have tiger's eye, amethyst, Clear quartz, rose quartz, aquamarine, citrine, chrysocolla, red jasper, and lapis lazuli. And all of these gemstones are found in this book. And why I love this book, so for example, if we come to Tiger's Eye, it has a great picture that, again, you could engage in a mindfulness conversation. And for example, it says, Tiger's Eye, I am courageous like a tiger. I am confident and succeed at whatever I put my mind to. The superpowers are courageous and confident. Use Tiger's Eye when you feel scared or shy. It will activate superpowers that help you feel courageous and confident. How can I use Tiger's Eye to activate my superpowers? With your eyes closed or open if you prefer, take a deep breath in and out and imagine this stone is helping you feel courageous and confident. So this is a great resource to introducing your students to crystals, I highly recommend. Another way you can connect to crystals are through using a crystal grid. And there are so many different shapes and sizes of crystal grids, but they connect us to different geometric shapes. So you can compare and contrast the different wooden grids that I have here. And they also make them on fabric as well. So I love using variety when it comes to crystal grids and meditation. And this is a way to really get crystal clear of our goals, of our intentions. So not only is this a great, you know, relationship skill, but this also works with goal setting. So what you would do, you know, when you're using the crystals for the grid, you work from the outside in and you place the crystal or stone on the points. So you're mindfully moving your stones as you're thinking of your goal, as you're breathing, almost similar to the pebble meditation that we practiced earlier. And again, it's a way to get really clear. And I always put my tallest stone in the center. So I have the clear quartz tower here. And this is a form of meditation of mindfulness using gemstones and crystals. And of course, you can have your students research, you know, more about crystals. They're connected to so many different possibilities. So once again, getting creative is so important. And I've even made photocopies of 
the different wooden grids so students can have their own, they can draw on them as well or place their own stones. You can go on a rock hunt on a mindful walk outside and find rocks and paint them as well. You can use them as kindness stones where you would write a positive word, a positive phrase or a mantra on the stone as well. So there's so many different ways that we can connect to ourselves for self-care because that is the greatest relationship that we will ever have is the relationship with ourselves. Restorative yoga is a great practice to tune us into our parasympathetic nervous system. Restorative yoga, I like to call it as the dessert of yoga. So we're going to use some props today that you can find you know, online or you can always create your own. We're going to use a bolster, which is a, a giant pillow. We're going to use blankets, yoga blocks, and an eye pillow. These are great tools because it allows the body to really melt in and feel the support of the materials. This takes us from that sympathetic nervous system of fight and flight to our parasympathetic nervous system of rest and digest. What I'm going to show you today is legs up the wall and shavasana, as these are two amazing restorative poses that really connect you back to yourself, helps to calm the body, calm the mind, so you're able to you know, be more successful and more focused with your students. But it starts with yourself, it starts in the heart as we connect to self-care. So we are going to start with our legs up the wall, also known as jellyfish pose. And if you didn't have a wall, you could also use a chair. So again, get creative. So my friend Lisa here, she has a blanket underneath her hips, but we're gonna prop her up some more. So what we're gonna do first, Lisa, is we're gonna add in, would you like to use the bolster? Yes, yeah, wonderful. All right, so we're gonna add the bolster so it goes the full length of her spine and then She's going to be a 90 degree angle. So she wants to have her feet up at the wall, similar to, you know, the capital letter L shape. And she's going to rest her feet up. Does that feel comfortable? It does. Okay, it amazing, wonderful. amazing. Yeah. Always check in with yourself, you know, as you're doing the poses. I'm going to add a blanket to her belly. Is that okay? Would you like a blanket? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to add a blanket for support. I'm going to use the blocks for her arms. So I'm gonna have one block on one side, <laughs> one block on the other. So you can gently rest your arm there. Here, we'll add it this way for you. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Does that feel okay? Wonderful. Okay. And then what we're gonna do, would you like a blanket for your head? A little bit more support? Mm -hmm. All right, so if you just lift your head up gently, I'm gonna put that there. Beautiful. And then, would you like a blanket for your feet? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> so this helps to, again, calm the body, calm the mind. And the last part is the eye pillow, which is like a bean bag. Would you like an eye pillow for your eye? So you'll close your eyes and then gently rest the eye pillow over your eyes. If you have more than one eye pillow, you can also add them to your arms. Would you like them for your arms? Oh, sure. All right, so we're gonna add them to your arms. And then let the magic begin as you breathe in and breathe out, just relaxing your body relaxing your mind in our legs up the wall pose, also known as jellyfish pose. And I also like to add in the sound of the singing bowl. So of course you could find it online or maybe you record yourself playing the singing bowl, but it's a nice tool to get connected back to your heart, back to yourself as you breathe in and breathe out and start to allow your mind to come to calm. Sometimes it's helpful to think of a word or a phrase such as a mantra or an affirmation for your mind to focus on. So it could be something simple as love, peace, I am strong, 
I am calm. If you have a hard time allowing all the thoughts to settle, focusing on your breath as you breathe in and breathe out, relaxing your body, relaxing your mind. Again, this pose really tunes into that parasympathetic nervous system of rest and digest. As self-care is so important, when we're able to take care of ourselves, we're able to take care of others. So using what you have to make yourself feel supported, because you are whole, there's nothing to fix. You have everything you need to balance your body. And you can do this for a minute. You can do it for three minutes, 10 minutes. If you do it up to 20 minutes, it's equal to a full night's sleep. So you can build up to that or again, use what you have, whether you use a chair, a table, a desk, the couch, your bed for support if you don't have a wall. And then nice and gently, you can start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. And be sure you slowly come out of the pose. You know, there's no rush. So do what feels best for you when it comes to legs up the wall, or I also like to call it the jellyfish pose. The next restorative pose that we're going to learn today is called Shavasana. And Shavasana in Sanskrit translates to the corpse pose. So just imagine that you're shedding all the things you no longer need to really feel refreshed. So you can do this just laying down on a mat. You don't need any extra props. Or if you do have blankets, blocks, bolsters, eye pillows, the more you have, the more supportive it will be for you. So right now I have Lisa here with the blanket supporting her head as a pillow. You could also use a pillow. Then she has a blanket covering her belly and her feet right now are resting on this bolster. You could have your feet rest on the bolster. You could have this under your knees. Again, you could use the bolster to support your back. If you didn't have a bolster, you could roll your blanket so it's in the shape of a bolster. And knowing that your, your blankets can be in different shapes and sizes, so you can have a smaller rectangle or square. You could fold it so it's even thicker. So you can really get creative when it comes to restorative yoga. So Lisa right here is in her Shavasana where her legs are, you know, out long. Another variation is Supta Baddha Konasana, which is the reclined butterfly pose. So what we're going to do now, she's going to move her feet off the bolster. And then she's going to bring the soles of her feet together. And we're going to support her knees with the blocks here. So I have two blocks. How does that feel? That feel okay? Or we can please adjust it. One? Okay. And blocks also have three different heights. We have low, medium, and high. So you can always do it to what feels comfortable for you when it comes to the support. We're gonna have her arms rest on these blankets here. So you lift one arm up, there you go, beautiful. And again, remembering to stay balanced and you can lift your other arm up, relax. And then once again, using the eye pillows, these are great tools for proprioception to get us back into our body. So I'm gonna add a eye pillow to your wrists here. I'm also going to add the eye pillows to your eyes. So you're just going to close your eyes and gently put that over you. And then I'm also going to add this roll of the blanket for her ankles here to support her ankles. So we're just going to tuck it in just like that. Beautiful. How does that feel? Oh, <laughs> so if you're helping someone get into the shape, always check in with them. Ask them how does that feel? 
Do you need something else? Do you need something less? Because again, it's just the shape and every body is different. So what may feel comfortable for you might not feel comfortable for someone else. So really practicing the self-care. And then the best part is you get to take a little yoga nap. As again, this tunes into our parasympathetic nervous system of rest and digest. And once again, I'm going to play the singing bowl for her to feel more calm, more relaxed as we breathe in and breathe out. And again, you can do this in your classroom. Maybe you find a spot in the faculty room, at home, you know, use a couch, use a chair if you, you know, don't feel comfortable laying down. But what's important is that you connect back to you, connecting back to your breath. Because no matter where you go, you are always breathing. And just by taking a deep breath activates those nerve endings at the base of our belly, which naturally tunes us into this parasympathetic nervous system. And the beauty of the polos using the props is that we really start to melt and sink into the earth to feel grounded, to feel supported. So this supports you if you're feeling stressed out, if you have anxiety, Again, just noticing how you feel and also noticing that it's okay if this doesn't feel great too. So just self-regulating and doing what you need to best serve yourself. So I'll take a few more moments, breathing in and breathing out. Again, you can always add a mantra, an affirmation, Play your favorite song, whatever feels comfortable for you as you take these mindful moments to practice self-care. So we'll stay here for 10 more seconds. So I'll count us down to calm. 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. And whatever Shavasana you chose, whether you were just laying down or chose the butterfly, or maybe you did something totally different, You'll gently start to wiggle your fingers and your toes and open your eyes if you close them. And if you are using an eye pillow, make sure you gently allow the light to come in because it can sometimes it can be intense. So just practice your mindfulness as you slowly come back. And this is a pose you can do for one minute, three minutes, 20 minutes, you know, you know your schedule. So see where you can integrate these mindful moments of self-care throughout your day. Today we're going to learn some mindful movement that you can use as a self-care brain break with your students right at their seat. So first we're going to learn the six movements of our spine. So make sure that your students have their feet on the ground and then they can sit comfortably on, on their chair. You can bring your hands to your thighs or to your knees, and we're going to start with our cat cows. So moving our spine back and forth. So what you'll do is you'll breathe in, open your heart, smile, breathe out, round your spine, tuck your chin to your chest, that's your cat. So breathing in, this is your cow. Breathing out, this is your cat. So this helps to open up the heart, open up the mind. So connect the breath to the movement as you breathe in and breathe out. Our next movements of the spine are our side body stretch. So once again, having your feet on the ground, you're gonna breathe in, reach those arms up to the sky, and then you're gently gonna bring your arms over to one side. So here I am bringing my arms over to the left. I can also create this side body shape by reaching for my right wrist. Or I can box my elbows as I breathe in. 
So you always want to make it comfortable for you and then breathe in, come back up to center, reach those arms up to the sky and then take it on over to the other side. Whether your hands are just reaching towards the wall, you reach for your wrist or create that box like shape with your elbows. And this helps our lungs because it expands the sides of our body so we can breathe better, have more energy and more focus. And then we'll come back through to center. The other two movements of our spine are the twists. So once again, have your feet on the ground. I'm going to take my left hand to my right knee and my right arm right behind me. So again, all chairs are different, so get creative using the chair that you have. So I have my right hand on the top part of my chair. I could also have it at the back part of the chair. And then I'm gonna look over my right shoulder and smile as I breathe in and breathe out, breathing in and breathing out. And twists help to rinse out our body, rinse out our mind. So whatever we no longer need, it just clears it all away. And then we'll come back through to center and try this on the other side. So I'm gonna take my right hand to my left knee. My left arm is gonna go either at the top of the chair or at the, the base of the chair as I look over my left shoulder, once again, smiling at someone else as you breathe in and breathe out, breathing in, breathing out and coming back through to center. So the six movements of the spine are so important to keep that healthy posture because a healthy spine is a healthy mind. So next you can clear out the clouds, stomp your feet. You can either have your hands clearing it all out on your desk or your, your lap, whatever feels good for you to shake it all out, let it all go. The next movements are helpful whether you've been writing or on technology. So we're gonna start to make some circles with our wrists and you can even make some circles with your ankles. So again, doing what feels good for you as you breathe in and breathe out. And then we'll come back through to center. Another wrist stretch is having your palm out. So this is also the Abhaya Mudra. And using, here I have my left hand. So using my right hand, I can gently press back on my fingertips as I breathe in and breathe out. And always listen to your body. So do what feels comfortable for you. And then as you come back to center, we're gonna now bring our fingertips facing the ground. Once again, with my right hand, I'm gonna gently press back the top part of my left hand as I breathe in and breathe out. This is a great stretch since we're all connected to our phones. You know, we're looking down, we're texting. So this is a great wrist stretch to support those joints. And then we'll come back to center and try it on the other side. So again, palm nice and wide, right hand, taking my left fingertips, gently pressing my fingertips back as I breathe in and breathe out. Again, listening to your body. And then coming back to center, flipping your hand so your fingertips face the ground, taking your other hand and gently press it back as you breathe in and breathe out. Very nice, gentle wrist stretch, whether you're writing or on your device. Our next pose is our seated pigeon pose. So what you're going to do, again, sitting with your feet on the ground, we're gonna take our left ankle to our right knee and breathe here. This may be enough stretch for you, or if you want a little bit more, you can breathe in, reach your arms up to the sky, and then gently start to forward fold. If you wanna add in a twist, what you do, since my left ankle is on my right knee, I'd bring my hands to my heart and take my left elbow to my left ankle as I breathe in and twist to the right. So you can always add it to the pose or take you know poses away from it. So whatever feels good for you. And then we'll come back to center, stomp it out, shake it out. And then we'll do that on our other side. So again, feet are grounded right ankle to your left knee. Again, each side is different and our body changes every day. So really listen and tune in. This is great self-awareness and, and self-management with how our body is feeling. Make sure you also flex through your toes. This may be your seated pigeon, or again, maybe you add in a forward fold, reaching those arms up, 
gently reaching towards the ground. You can even make a box with your elbow. You can get creative here. Or again, if you're gonna add in a twist, hands come to your heart. I'm going to take my right elbow over to my left side as I breathe in and breathe out with a twist. Breathing in, breathing out, and then coming back through to center. And again, shake it out, let it go. Seated Eagle is another great pose to boost our brain power because this crosses the midline of our brain. So you can start by having your right arm out and then cross your left arm over. Then you can cross them again. This is the Eagle wrap. If that's not comfortable, you could always have your hands come to your shoulders just like this. Maybe this is where you stay or you can add on by taking your left knee over your right knee. You can stay here in your eagle. You can make some circles. This helps to open up those shoulders. And of course, if this didn't feel comfortable, you could add in that seated pigeon as well. Again, make it yours, get creative. And then if you're doing the circles with your arms, try that going in the other direction. And you could still do that with your hands or on your shoulders. <laughs> and then coming back through the center, shake it out, let it go. Let's try that on our other side. So now I have my left arm out, right arm over, and then I crisscross it one more time, and then I'll take my right knee on top of my left. Maybe you stay here, maybe you hook your foot around. Again, depends on you know what you're wearing, the shoes that you're wearing. You could stay here, you could make those circles with your elbows. You could lift your elbows up, you could bring your elbows closer to your heart. And again, you can have your hands reach for your shoulders as well, or come back to that seated pigeon pose. So get creative with the movements. And then we'll come back through to center, shaking it out, letting it all go. Another great pose that you can do right at your seat is your seated mountain pose. So wherever you are, have your feet on the ground, arms can come by your side as you breathe in and breathe out. Maybe you close your eyes or keep them open. You could bring your hands to your heart or any of the mudras. You could have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, purple as you breathe into your seated mountain pose. And then on our next breath, we're gonna take a forward fold. So just be mindful of you know, the desk, your space that you're using. You can always come to the side. As you breathe in, reach and stretch those arms up to the sky. Breathe it out, forward fold. Maybe your arms start to sway. You could box your elbows. So whatever feels good for you, and then you'll slowly come back up. Now I'm gonna share with you some poses that you can do using your desk or your chair for support. So as we stand up, we're going to do our down dog using a desk. And there's a few different ways you can try this. Anytime we do a downward dog, make sure your palms are out wide so this supports our core strength and even our handwriting skills. So you're gonna high five your desk and then gently walk your feet back. And you can let your head hang here in your desk downward dog. Now here you can get creative. You can lift one foot up. You can make those circles, whatever feels good for you. And remembering whatever you do to one side, you wanna to do to the other to stay balanced. You can also do this down dog with a chair. So I could either use the top part of the chair. Again, every chair is gonna be different. So, you know, be mindful of that, be aware of that. Once again, I high five the chair walk my feet back as I breathe in and breathe out. And I can also try that with the, the base of the chair. Once again, palms nice and wide, high five the, the chair, walk your feet back as you breathe in and breathe out. So it's important to show your students a variety of ways so they have that voice and choice to see what would feel good for them in that shape using you know, the materials that you have. Another pose you can use when it comes to the classroom is using the desk or the chair for support for a tree pose. So you can either, and again, doesn't matter what side, you can start with a kickstand tree with your 
foot by your ankle. Maybe you hold on to the, the desk. Maybe you hold on to the chair. You can reach and stretch your arms to the sky. You can bring your foot a little bit higher. Just be mindful not to put your foot on your knee. So either below your knee or above your knee. You could add in those eagle arms for a little bit more brain power work. Add in a mudra. And of course, you could always ask to hold someone's hand as well, a little bit of teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work, so do what feels good for you. And then you'll come back to center, shake it out, let it all go, come back to your mountain pose, your standing mountain, and try that on the other side. Whether you have your hand to the desk for support, you could use a wall, you know, whatever you have to feel that strength, to feel that power. And the other trick to tree pulls is to keep your eyes on something that's not moving. That also strengthens our focus, right? So this could be your tree. Maybe your arms are to the sky. You could add in that those eagle arms. And then you'll come back through to center. Another great balancing pose is the airplane. So once again, you could either have one hand supported on the, the desk or the chair and the other arm flying out to the side with your foot lifted. You also could try it without using something. You could bring your hands to your heart, your arms forward, your arms by your side. Again, flexing through your toes, keeping your hips squared. And then come back to center and we'll try that on our other side. So once again, begin in your mountain. Arms reach out. Lift your other leg and feel free to hold on to someone or something for support. And then we'll come back through to center. Another great pose that really strengthens the brain power and is a great quick brain break is our midline move it, movement. So I like to call this our shining star pose. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna move your feet apart, reach and stretch your arms out, wiggle your fingers, share your shine. Now we're going to take our right hand to our left toes, come back to center, left hand to your right toes. Connect your breath to the movement as you breathe in and breathe out. And your students can go as fast or as slow as they'd like. Just be mindful that you don't get dizzy, but this is a great way to wake up the body, wake up the mind, create some movement and mindfulness throughout your day so your students stay focused and alert and they're connected to their, their body and their mind. And then we'll come back to center. Another way you can do this is standing in mountain pose and connecting your elbow to your knee. So for example, if I'm gonna lift my left knee, I'm gonna reach my right elbow as I breathe in and breathe out. Left elbow, right knee, breathing in, breathing out. And you can get creative here as you connect the breath to your movement. So this is another way you can get that midline movement right in the classroom. And then we'll come back to center. And our last pose using the desk and the chair is your child's pose or your Shavasana right here at your desk. So making a little pillow with your arms, you can bring your forehead to you know, your hands as you breathe in and breathe out. You can also use an eye pillow, or you can make your own out of a knee-high sock and rice, and maybe you add in you know, an essential oil such as lavender or peppermint. But this is another great tool for self-awareness, for self-management as we connect to our breath, as we breathe in and breathe out, breathing in and breathing out, and then slowly coming back up. So it's so important to create these mindful moments throughout your day, whether it just be one pose or a few of the poses that I shared with you. Thank you for watching my Kindfulness Tools for Schools presentation. I hope you're able to integrate all these tools and techniques into your classroom and beyond. Namaste.